Hi and welcome. This is Homebody Rundown and I'm HR. I haven't filmed much content over the summer because I'm spending a lot of time outside, but I have a few meals and desserts in this video. Maybe there'll be some ideas in here for you. Most of our meals are vegetarian or almost vegetarian and I don't usually follow any recipes, but if there is something similar online, I will link it in the description making some rice for lunch, which emptied out the rice jar, so I need to refill it. I buy rice in bulk and keep it in these two gallon buckets with a gamma seal lid. The lids are definitely worth the money. The one gallon jar and the bucket are both from Azure Standard. The lids uh, for each are a separate purchase and I will link those in the description. To make this tofu, I'm going to drain the package dry off the tofu a bit and cut it into cubes, tossing it with some cornstarch and salt. Adding avocado and toasted sesame oil to a stainless steel pan. Normally I use a lot more oil to do this, more of a deep fry, but thought I'd try less this time. Also a couple kids do not like tofu, so I am scrambling some eggs. Fried the tofu out on the grill just to keep the oil smell out of the house. But I don't know if it matters because I'm cooking eggs in the house, so there are going to be odors. Rice is finished in the instant pot, so letting it vent. Chopping up some salted cashews. Stirring the rice to help it cool down. Also had a bag of riced cauliflower in the freezer, so I'm cooking that to mix in with my rice. Roasting some broccoli in the oven. I didn't film it, but the tofu was a disaster and stuck like crazy, so I scrambled it up and decided to cook the bag of frozen stir-fry veggies in the same pan. There was definitely enough oil. Everyone can just make their own plates or bowls when I make stir-fry like this but there's something for everyone. I like to add all of it, plus some peanut sauce and hot sauce. It's so good. Soaked pinto beans in a brine overnight. Now I'm going to drain them and rinse them. I found this attachable strainer that is for pasta, but it makes draining these a lot easier too. I do have to bend it quite a bit so that the beans don't just flow right underneath it on this big glass bowl. Uh, next, I'll get them in the Instant Pot with water and seasonings. I always make a lot so that I can put some in the freezer. We primarily eat these as refried beans. To make them into refried beans, I add lime juice and I'll add more seasonings if I need to, which are garlic powder, onion powder, and salt. I mash them and let them cool. They thicken up quite a bit, so I will add back in some of the cooking liquid if they need it. Once they're cool, I get them in the refrigerator and freezer. I like this six cup Pyrex uh, dish. It is a good amount for the five of us. On this day, I'm making a pie. Normally I make a crust that has butter. Well, normally I buy pie crust, but if I'm going to make it, I use butter. That's what my mom does. But I saw a shortening only crust in this Better Homes and Gardens baking book. I love this cookbook. Pretty sure we got it when we got married in 2000, which would make sense for the copyright. It's 1998. Anyway, the recipe looks really easy and the pie is just for my family, so we can experiment. I am mixing this up in the food processor with a dough blade. The texture seems fine and it's sticking together, so I'll roll it out but into a rectangular shape because I'm using a casserole dish instead of a pie plate. Honestly, it's primarily because I have a lid for the dish and with the higher sides, the pie won't crumble all over the edges. Of course, it won't look as pretty. This is a pie I only make in summer when there are fresh mulberries. Our neighbors are nice enough to let my oldest child go pick as many mulberries as he wants off of their tree. In the past, when we haven't had many mulberries, I've added blueberries to the filling, and now I do it every time because it's a really good combination. The filling is mulberries, blueberries, sugar, cinnamon, flour, and a little lemon juice, and I don't measure anything. 
took some finessing to get the crust up around the sides of this dish and I think I forgot to say that the recipe was for a double crust so I will have one to put on top. The filling seems like a good amount. I don't really measure it but if it was really low I would add more fruit. Now I'm getting the top crust on and I will put a couple slits in this before it goes into the oven. We'll let it bake most of the time covered in foil because it is so thick, but I did uncover it for maybe the last 20 minutes or so, and I did check the internal temperature with a thermometer to make sure it was hot. It was baked through and it held together well. I don't think the crust has as much flavor without the butter, but this ended up being delicious. I think the mulberries were peak flavor. Since that crust was so easy to make, I'm doing it again on this day for a quiche. Using up what I have in the refrigerator, which includes some diced red onion, roasted red bell pepper, and arugula, I mix the eggs and cream or milk and seasonings in a separate container. I like to use this measuring cup because it has a pour spout. Adding Parmesan and mozzarella cheese. I don't know that I've ever used mozzarella in a quiche, but it's what we had opened. Usually I add goat cheese. The egg mixture looks extra yellow because I add turmeric. So the mozzarella definitely creates more browning on top, but that's fine. It wasn't burned. It tasted good, but the mozzarella just doesn't have as strong of a flavor as the goat cheese, so I don't think I'll use it again. making a mostly vegetarian shepherd's pie, or at least what we call shepherd's pie, using Beyond Meat veggie burgers and lentils. I think all the other ingredients here are vegetarian except for the Worcestershire, which is not because it has anchovies. I usually use white onion, but these are red onions that were already diced in the fridge. Adding seasonings and let this cook for a few minutes decided to make this meal because I had a box of instant potatoes that needed to get used up. For extra flavor, I'm adding parsley, garlic, salt, and Parmesan cheese. The frozen mushrooms and green beans have been cooking for a while, and now I'm adding in cooked lentils. A quick taste to check the seasonings. And adding the mashed potatoes. This ended up being a perfect amount for this size of pan. Also, this pan is cast iron, so it's oven proof and everything is cooked. So I'm just putting it under the broiler for a couple minutes. The instant potatoes don't brown up as pretty as real mashed potatoes, but it's definitely a lot easier and it still tasted great. Making a kind of enchilada rice and bean type dish, using up random things like cooked lentils, frozen cilantro, opened salsa, roasted garlic, and olives. The lentils, pinto beans, and rice are already cooked. The corn and peppers are frozen, so this comes together quickly. Right here, I'm adding the one ingredient I wish I hadn't. This is a green salsa from Trader Joe's. It needed to be used up, but I did not like the flavor in here. The frozen veggies are cooked through, so adding in everything else except the dairy and the olives. The heat is off and I'm adding Greek yogurt and pepper jack and Monterey Jack cheeses and sliced Kalamata olives. Put this under the broiler for a few minutes to melt the cheese and also making bean and cheese quesadillas for that one child that will not eat casseroles of any kind. This was good, but like I said, I would not add the Trader Joe's green salsa in the future. Now for a dessert, I am making a chocolate pie, but not following any recipe. I will include a link in the description for a basic chocolate pie. The general recipe is a chocolate pie crust, uh, pudding, and whipped cream. For the crust, I'm using the food processor to break up these chocolate sandwich cream cookies and adding in melted butter. 
at least when I make these crusts, they are very crumbly. So instead of making this in a pie plate where the crumbs always fall over the edge, I am also making this in a casserole dish. Using the KitchenAid to make whipped cream, the ingredients are heavy cream, powdered sugar, and vanilla. I'm using fourfold vanilla. I do taste the whipped cream to make sure it has enough sweetness since I didn't measure. I wanted to experiment this time and add a little tanginess, like a hint of cheesecake using sour cream and cream cheese. I'm going to mix these together with some powdered sugar and vanilla and replace part of the milk with this mixture. Now I'm adding in the pudding mix and some milk to the cream cheese mixture. With the Whole Foods brand pudding mix, there's always speckling. It never becomes one smooth shade. This is the whipped cream and adding some reserved cookie crumbles, but I'm also saving some to sprinkle on top. Spread the filling over the crust and then got everything into the refrigerator for a couple of hours. Making a ramen type soup. I really like these Japanese buckwheat noodles. They cook very quick. I did buy the miso recently, but all the other stuff was just pulled from the pantry or freezer. I much prefer green onions in this kind of a soup, but all I had was white onion. So cooking that with frozen mushrooms, toasted sesame oil, and seasoning, and garlic. It smells wonderful. More seasonings, and some vinegar. Everything is cooked together for a few minutes and now I'm adding water. It wasn't salty enough, so this is oyster sauce. Probably most people just leave these whole, but I like to break them up into bite-sized pieces. The noodles are done and I didn't film it, but added in some green peas at the end. And I always add more sambal olek to my bowl. This was really good. Got the chocolate pie out of the refrigerator, adding a layer of whipped cream and sprinkling over the rest of the cookie crumbles. It was really convenient to have this in a small casserole dish with a lid as opposed to the pie plate. And I really like that hint of cream cheese or cheesecake flavor. Making a pot pie today, but trying a couple new things. First of all, since I had the food processor out yesterday to make the pie crust, I went ahead and mixed up drop biscuits, but I didn't need them until the next day. So I put them in the refrigerator, which I've never done before. Also, I have added lentils to a vegetarian pot pie and veggie meats, but on this day, I'm trying cannellini beans. Melting butter with seasonings, including the bouillon. Let the onion saute for a few minutes, then added frozen veggies and the rinsed white beans. Nutritional yeast and a little more fat stirring in flour and then milk. I had some whole milk left over that I mixed up from a powder, so using that up and also 2% milk. Adding more seasonings, this is black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder mix, and let that thicken up. Put the mix into a casserole dish and layered the pieces of biscuit dough over the top. Going to bake this covered for part of the time. I forgot to mention that the biscuits are made with half white flour and half whole wheat flour, so that's why they are darker. But they did bake through, although they didn't seem to rise as much. I was not a fan of adding the white beans. I think just because of their very soft texture, but it didn't affect the flavor at all, and I don't think anyone else even noticed. Our two oldest kids headed off to college in August, so now there's only three of us at home. I am going to have to really learn how to cook smaller quantities. I also want to figure out meals that I can make at home and freeze to take to our kids at college, so that content should be coming out this fall. Hope you have a wonderful day, and thanks for watching.